so this is things you probably, I'm assuming, already know or remember about, about the French Revolution from high school. Uh, absolutism was bad, like kings, that sort of thing. Uh, citizenship and democracy are good, and there were lots of beheadings. And this is, I am sure it's self-evident, but just in case that is, of course, a rendering of the beheading of Louis XVI in Legos. Um, all right, just in case anybody wants any more background, I didn't know. I found this online. Uh, it's by Brianna Chevaria from Third Period. You can see that they had an ineffective ruler, Louis the Sixteenth, as well as an unaffected king uh, on the bottom there. And uh, so that, that should give you, if you want a little background. Um, I don't know Brianna, but anyway, uh, that's a, that's good. Okay. Um, apologies if she's here. Uh, okay, so let's just do a very quick timeline of the French Revolution. Uh, this is going to go by very quickly. Uh, so 1789 uh, is really when things get going, the convening of the Third Estate. I'm going to go really fast here. Uh, Serving the Bastille in July 1789, uh, a peasant revolt thereafter, the Declaration of Rights of Man, very important. Uh, 1790, all titles of nobility abolished. That's when they start rounding up the aristocracy. Uh, food, more riots, the monarchy officially abolished in 1792, uh, 1793, Louis XVI is executed, uh, and then the Committee for Public Safety is implemented, they went around killing everybody. Uh, more riots, more beheadings, 1793, Marie Antoinette is executed, and then the new calendar is decreed, which we're going to be talking about. Then uh, rise, Robespierre's rise to power, more riots, 1794 is the reaction, that's when the ruling class has had enough and they decide to fight back. Uh, and then uh, Napoleon begins his rise to prominence in the French army and becomes dictator. And then, of course, 1988, Napoleon transported to Sandy Mistel for an excellent adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so that went by really quickly, but the, the good thing is that you don't really need to know any of that for what I'm going to talk about. You actually just need to know a couple things. One, that the um, ideological underpinning of the revolution was a uh, commitment to enlightenment rationality, that science and reason were superior to religion and superstition, and that um, you know, the rulers were not uh, uh, God incarnate, and that there should be democracy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and that the revolution was cultural as well as political. So what that means is just that it wasn't just about overthrowing the king, it was about changing all of society, changing every aspect of society. Um, um, so, among other things, they're going to change everything. They're going to change the ruler, but they're also going to change weights and measures, the social organizations, everything. And they decide they also need to change the calendar. So they convene this group of guys, they're going to put together a whole new calendar. They're not going to use their kitten calendar anymore. All right, so what was wrong with the old calendar? Um, the old calendar was the Gregorian calendar, which we use today. It was, of course, used by the Ancien Regime and the Church, so that was one strike against it. Um, months were named for Roman gods, which you probably know, also days of the week are named for Roman gods, so there was a pagan aspect that they did not like. And days were designated for saints. So in general, there was just too much superstition and not enough reason. Um, this is a uh, Saint of the Day app for kids. So, for example, you can see that April 24th is Saint Fidelis of Sigmaringen Day. Um, so they wouldn't have liked this app at all. That was, that was the problem. So they decided they're going to make a whole new calendar. Totally new. They're going to make a new year, new months, new days, new time. And then they make this very convenient and clear new calendar, which I am now going to explain to you. So they're, they're totally starting over. So first they decide they're going to change the months. They uh, established new months starting the uh, new year in the French calendar is the autumnal equinox. So the first month, they, oh, they give the months names that correspond to the atmospheric conditions at that particular time. So starting late September to late October, you have grape harvest month, followed by foggy month, followed by frosty month. Um, and you can see they made very nice pictures. And they also, each season the names rhyme. So you have Vendemire, Brumaire, and Fermaire for fall. And then I feel like for contemporary period, what can't be said with clip art? So then the snowy month, the rainy month, 
And the windy month, of course, is winter, and you see, again, they rhyme. Uh, then spring was germination, flower, and meadow. And then summer, I'm going to go back to the French icons, because in summer they have a lot of boobs. And I like that. So then summer was harvest. Hot. That one has a boob and a swan. And um, fruit. And again, they rhyme Mesidor, Thermidor, and Fructidor. So I just, I have to say, I think this is awesome. I think it's awesome to name months hot. <laughs> um, so this is when things now start to get really crazy. Because they're not just changing the names of the months, they're changing the names of the days. So they decide that they're going to name each day for a plant, mineral, animal, or tool that's indigenous to France every single day of the year. It's just that crazy. So most days are plants or animals, every fifth day are plants or minerals, every fifth day is an animal, and every tenth day is a tool. So, for example, the ninth day of the great harvest month is parsnip day. The 21st day of the frosty month is sugar maple day. And then the 12th day of that same month is horseradish day. The 20th day of the meadow month is pitchfork day. The second day of the snowy month is coal day. And the fifth day of the germination month is hen. Uh, a few more, there's rhubarb day. And of course, lentil day. And that's my personal favorite, that's cat day. That's my cat, Ira, that's in snowy month. Um, so nothing says revolution like just setting the clock back to zero, uh, which they decided to do. They decided they were not going to use any sort of like BC, AD, nothing was going to be pegged anymore to any sort of religious uh, uh, timeline. So they decided that 1792 would become year one of the French era. We are currently in year 221 of the third century of the French era, and year 222 begins on September 22nd of this year. Please do not confuse it with 5774. Sorry to my fellow Jews, that happens on September 5th. Okay, so today's date is actually Lavender Harvest 221. It's the 14th day of Mesidor and the 221st year of the French era. Uh, so that's exciting. It's good to know what day it is. But it's Lavender Day. Um, and I also just wanted to include some other days that I really like. Foggy turkey, that's going to happen on November 5th of this year. Fruit puffball, that's August 20th. Flower carp. Um, rainy lungwort. Foggy endive. Oh, great harvest eggplant. I thought this picture really summed that up. Um, harvest hairy vetchling, just if you're wondering, that is what that is. And of course, everyone's favorite, hot round. <laughs> That's coming up. <laughs> so I just want to be clear, they weren't actually going around being like, I'll meet you on hot round day. They were saying like, I'll meet you on the 14th of Mesador, if they were saying it at all, which they probably were not. Or they were actually saying, I'll meet you on Partiti, which was the day of the week, um, which I'll get to in a minute. So, but they didn't know, and they were supposed to know it was mandated. Um, but that was actually not the only change. Things just kept getting even crazier, because they were really into decimals. They were really into, uh, as I mentioned, Enlightenment rationality. They thought metric and that decimal counting was amazing. So they really, this is where they really fucked things up. So there are still 12 months in a year on the French calendar, but there are only 30 days. Every month has 30 days. Every month has, not weeks, but three decades. Decades are 10 days long. And this is, now this gets crazy. Every day now has 10 hours in it. Not 24 hours, 10 hours. Every hour has 100 minutes in it. And every minute has 100 seconds in it. And actually, if you, if you do the math, what you'll find when you do this is that they've changed the length of a second by about 15%. So a French revolutionary second is actually 15% shorter than a real second, not a Gregorian second, and that actually throws everything off. Like, you can't actually do that. It just made things crazy. But they did try to market these awesome clocks uh, that start at 10 and go to 10. So I guess that you could be like, I'll meet you at 8.95 or something. I don't know, but I think that it was, I think people were supposed to tell time like that, so they didn't, these clocks apparently didn't sell well. Um, all right. Here's some other issues. 
12 times 30 does not equal 365. So what did they do with those extra five or six days if it was a leap year? These were called complementary days. <laughs> and they were an intercalary period, so they weren't even really supposed to be the year. And they named them for the sand culottes, or and, and named them the sand culottes, I'm going to get to that. Um, so these are five or six uh, complementary days, the end of each year. Uh, this should not be confused with pants optional, okay? Uh, so I don't wear these ones, or these, or even those. Um, they're named for the sand culottes, I said that. And that's a sand culotte. And uh, everybody got those days off. So that was a, that was a bonus. All right. So who were the sand culottes? Um, they were actually members of the radical urban working class and believed in popular democracy, blah, 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 social that kind of quality and affordable food. Uh, they also provided the strength behind key moments in the revolution. That's really important, and that's why they did this for them, I guess. Uh, they were the ones uh, rioting and killing people for a lack of uh, better. So the way to put that, they were the muscle, and they did actually wear pants. They just wore different pants than the uh, ruling class. So uh, there are some set a lot. So they, these five or six complimentary days all were set up to celebrate a particularly romantic aspect of this revolutionary class. So this is about this is starting about September fifteenth of each year for us. So the first day is the celebration of virtue, then the celebration of talent, then the celebration of labor. Convictions, honors, a leap year's revolution, and of course, the celebration of cheese. Not really, but I, they should have had that because it would have lasted longer. And I would like to go to this cheese celebration because there's free entry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So clearly, there were a lot of issues with this calendar. Let's just review them. The days didn't match up to a year. That's a really big problem. Uh, <laughs> Especially when all your trading partners are using a different calendar, it's very hard to figure out when you're supposed to trade with them. Uh, so I mean, it also was just compacted by the fact that the timelines were altered, which threw it off every year even further. So every year, different days were occurring at different times of the year. Um, also, having uh, the 10-day decades instead of 7-day weeks meant that there was only one day of rest every every 10 days, whereas previously, weirdly, before the revolution, there was a day of rest every 6 days. It seems counterintuitive, so that was a bummer, obviously. And, um, and also, the other thing that was important uh, was that they mandated that all the French territories use these months, use this calendar, but the atmospheric conditions didn't match up with the weather in most of the other territories, so it was really silly to have people in you know the uh, Martinique or whatever, calling it the snowy month, it's just not going to happen there. Uh, and but most of all, it's just impossible to use. Nobody knew what time it was. Nobody knew what day it was. But there were people like running around trying to kill you if you didn't use it. I met earlier to read. There was like a a whole like declaration of the use, and it's very very scary. And I didn't read it earlier, but it was really you were really supposed to be using it. Teachers were supposed to teach it to their kids and blah blah blah, and everyone was supposed to use it. All right. So what it actually ended up happening to the calendar? Napoleon actually abolishes the calendar on January 1st of 1806, which was granite day in the snowy month, if you were still using it. Uh, it was briefly reintroduced during the Paris Commune of 1871, uh, which lasted for 17 days. And, uh, and the Gregorian calendar remains dominant now, which allows the French to continue to have kitten calendars to this very day. Um, but there are some ways that the calendar lives on, and I think we still see traces of it, even now. How, what are those things? Uh, let's see. So around France, you will see monuments that ha are dated uh, with, you know, so you can see that was Ventez uh, in the year 109, which is weird. They weren't, no, never mind. Uh, and then in, this is another one. You can see it was built on the 9th of the foggy month in the third year. Uh, also, students of political theory will, of course, be familiar with the Aiken Brumaire. Yeah, it's very important writing in 19th century political theory. Uh, and there is actually a class of uh, lightweight surveillance frigates in the French Navy, which are the Floreal class and are named for the spring months, Floreal, Germinal, and Prairial. So that explains a lot about the French Navy. <laughs> And then, of course, Lobster Thermidor, which uh, was interesting. Lobster Thermidor is actually called Lobster Thermidor because 
There was a play called Thermidor, and there was a, in Paris, and there was a restaurant across the street from the play, and the restaurant in the theater, and the restaurant decided to make a dish specially for the play, so they invented lobster Thermidor to be silly. So uh, that's basically it. If you want to know what day it is every day, you can follow me on Twitter. <laughs> because I tweet the day every day. So you'll know.